Welcome to the AIM Insight e-training series presented by AIM Sports, providing support and training of your AIM Sports products when and where you want it. This module is creating a new track in AIM Sports GPS Manager software. Just a couple of the benefits of using a GPS sensor with your AIM Sports data system is the ability to use the GPS information to generate highly accurate track maps and lap times. To make the use of this sensor even easier, AIM Sports has created the GPS Manager software. The GPS Manager software has over 250 worldwide tracks already included in its database, and we are adding more all of the time. However, you may want to visit a track that is not yet included in the database. The good news is that the GPS Manager software allows you to add tracks to the database very easily. There are a couple ways to get information you need to create a new track in the GPS Manager software. The first is to use the Google Earth program available free on the internet, and get the latitude and longitude values of the start-finish line in the decimal degree format. The other way is to actually make a few laps around the track with your AIM Sports data system, download the data as you normally would in Race Studio 2, and then from the GPS Manager software, create the new track using your downloaded data. In this training video, we are going to create a track with the information from both Google Earth and Race Studio 2, and assumes you already have both. To begin the process of creating a new track in the GPS Manager database, first open the software. This is what the software looks like when you first open it. Then simply click on the New button. This will open this new track data window. The first thing we need to do is type in the name that you want to call your new track. In this case, we will call this new track Grass Valley and type it into the track box. Another important part of saving a track is to add some more information that will help you sort or filter the tracks in your database. The two remaining pieces of information required are the nation the track is located and the track type. Let's start with selecting the nation. Here you have two choices. The first is to add a nation if it is not already included in the database by clicking on the add nation button. But in this and most cases the nation where the track is located will already be in the pull down list highlighted here. To open the pull down list click on the open button. This list will open and in our case the US is already listed. To select the US value just click on it. The last important item we should do in the new track data dialog box is to select the track type. Again we can add a new track type by clicking on the add track type button just like before but most track types are already in the pull down list. To open the pull down list click on the open button. The track type list will open and in this case Grass Valley is an auto road course. To select the auto road course value just click on it. Now we have all of the information we need input into this dialog box if you know the coordinates for the start finish line from Google Earth or another method. I will show you how we input that information later. If you have some AIM Sports GPS data from laps already ran on the track we can load that track shape information right here in this dialog box and we can do this now or we can do this later if we gather this information after the track is saved. In this case we do already have the data. To start the process of loading the track data we just need to click on the load track shape button. After pressing the load track shape button this window opens and allows you to browse to the track shape file. These may have a GPK, KML, or KMB extension with the most common being the GPK file that is generated with each test you run with an AIM Sports GPS sensor connected to your data system. This GPK file will be in the location where you have stored the test when you downloaded the files. In this case I have stored the data download in the AIM Sport Race Studio 2 data 2010 Grass Valley folder. So we need to navigate to that folder and we will start by clicking on the up one level button and we will click on it again. This gets us to the AIM Sport folder. Then we need to double click on the Race Studio 2 folder. Then double click on the data folder. Just a quick note here, if you allow Race Studio 2 software to store your data in the default location, this data folder is where your data will be. But in this case a subfolder was created called 2010 Grass Valley and to open that folder double click on that folder. Here in this folder is the Grass Valley GPK file we are looking for. 
you can just click on it and then click the open button or double click right on the file name to load the file. Now this dialog box has all the information needed to create the new Grass Valley track. To finish this dialog box, click on the OK button. As you can see here, Grass Valley is now included in the track's database, but we still have some more things to do to finish adding the track correctly. In the lower half of the screen, we can see the graphical map of the track. When we use a GPK file to generate the map, it shows all of the laps, including the in and out laps, that the car traveled during the session. To generate a nice clean single lap of the track, we need to uncheck the Show All Laps checkbox. Lap 1 of this test was an incomplete out lap. To move forward and select another lap, click on the Next Lap button. And to move forward one more lap, click on the Next Lap button again. This looks like a good and complete lap. Now we need to set our start finish line coordinates. The start finish line coordinates here are reflecting where the red cursor is currently placed and may or may not be where you want your start finish line to be. In this case, this is not where the line should be. There are two ways to input the correct coordinates. The first way is just to click on the map where the start finish line is and then click on the set with cursor position coordinates button. If that is close enough for you, you are done and can save the track and be finished. But in this case, we have the start finish line coordinates we pulled out of Google Earth that fall right on the painted start finish line. To input the coordinates directly into the latitude and longitude fields, we need to click into the boxes and replace them with our more accurate values. If you ever want to include the map of the track in your Smarty Cam overlay, this is where you would generate that map. To generate and export the Smarty Cam map, click on the Export button. This Save the Track File dialog box opens. Make sure the location and name of the new KMB file is what you want and click on the Save button. If you want to show the new KMB file in the database, click on the Show KMB File for Smarty Cam radio button. And finally, if you have not saved the track yet, click on the Save button. Now that you have the track stored in the database, before you go out on the track and expect your data system to give you accurate lap times at the correct start-finish line, you need to upload the track information into your data system. After connecting your PC and your data system, click on the Read button to see what tracks are already stored on your data system. In this case, just one track, the Daytona Oval, is stored. To add a track, first we need to select the track, or tracks, we want to add to our data system. In this case, we are going to select just our new Grass Valley track by selecting the Grass Valley track check box. Once we have the Grass Valley track checked, click on the Send to GPS button to upload the track information into the data system. When the transfer of data is completed, this dialog box appears showing that the data was transmitted to the GPS. Click on the OK button. That completes creating a new track with good start-finish line coordinates, creating a map for your Smarty Cam overlay, and transmitting the new track to your data system so you are ready to go out on the track. For more AIM Insight eTraining content and information about upcoming on-site training seminars, visit www.aimsports.com forward slash support, your source for support and training of AIM Sports products when and where you want it.